As the confusion over masks continues, a worrying amount of abuse has been reported to have occurred against people who could not wear a mask uh, during COVID, obviously, uh, because of medical reasons. So, two people, uh, those people are Michelle Green and Corey Wood, who both received, frankly, disgusting attacks oh. from members of the public, despite the fact they're medically exempt from wearing a mask. Uh, we'll speak to... Hello, Michelle. Hello, guys. Thank Hello. Good both morning. Both of you for joining us. Let's sp speak to Michelle first. Michelle... Firstly, just tell us what happened to you. I was actually out shopping with my little boy in Pound Stretcher because he, he has ASD. He goes through loads of phone charging wires so we were getting a new wire for him. And there was a couple behind me, heard them whispering. Wasn't exactly sure what she was saying, but after there she was whispering, gesturing towards me. Then as I'm getting away a bit later on, I, t I turned around to my little boy and I said to him, the naughty people like that shouldn't be talking about people and being rude about them. And the couple heard me and the man started giving me a load of abuse, telling me I was illegal, I was breaking the law, me. I have to wear a mask. So she, so, I, so she kind of pushed your buttons and you, and you bit, but understandably. Of course, but of course. Can, so can you tell us about the sunflower lanyard? Because I knew a little bit about this, but to be honest with you, it's, it's a headline you read and then you forget about. So, but it's a really, this is the really important issue. And I think if we do anything today, we kind of spread awareness yeah. about the sunf sunflower what, lanyard. Exactly tell us, what they mean. Tell us exactly what it means and, 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 uh, and it exempts you, right, from, from wearing the face mask. No. The lanyard doesn't exempt you. I've got, actually got an exemption card that I actually have attached. I have it on my lanyard. The lanyard is for invisible disabilities. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes, obviously, you might need a little bit more time, might need a bit more support in the store. But just because you've got a lanyard, it doesn't mean that you've got exemption from not wearing a mask. Right. Okay. 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 So, so tell us, Michelle, tell us why you're exempt. I have... Asthma, I have bronchitis, lung disease, and I've obviously have heart disease as well. So I struggle, especially, especially when it's hot weather, makes it particularly hard to wear my mask. I can't breathe with my mask on. Uh -huh. OK, OK. And I think what, what, what sort of seems to be happening here is, I guess which feels a little strange, is obviously Michelle is exempt. She's wearing her lanyard, she's wearing her past with that information on. Yeah. But people seem to be policing this themselves and almost, you know, like you're, you're being met with abuse, which I guess you're with your son. That must have just been awful, Michelle. It is, obviously, my son having additional needs. It's quite distressing for them. Distressing for both of you, I'm sure. Michelle, would you like to see a system where, by wearing something like a sunflower lanyard, people would immediately see that as recognisable uh, and more public awareness around it? So, you, so we know what so it is. Exactly, so people yeah. understand. There seems to be a lot of the people abusing the lanyards, thinking, going, getting the lanyards, thinking that they're exempt from using a mask. Seems to be a lot of it, and I seem to be seeing a lot of it in social media as well, all saying the same thing. Needs to be some sort of way of having a proper exit. To the, obviously having the awareness out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, someone else who received a shocking amount of abuse was Corey Wood. Corey, good morning. All right, hello there. Um, I mean, when I read this this morning, it really upset me. Tell, tell us a little bit about what happened to you. Yeah, so I was delivering some vital supplies for my organisation, Dimensions, um, and basically I got on a bus to, to, to do that delivery, and the bus driver very confronted me very angrily and said, where is your mask, where is your mask? I tried to explain to him that I'm not wearing a mask and that because I'm clusters disabled, I am exempt for it as per official government guidance. Um, but he seemingly wasn't accepting that. He wasn't happy with that. He just basically ignored my explanations over and over again. And even worse, he then kind of started to invite members of the public into the discussion. He tried to get them to gang up on me almost. It was a really, really unpleasant and horrific experience. Yeah, I bet. What, what is your condition, Corey, if you don't mind me asking? 
Yeah, my, my condition is Asperger's, which is part of the autistic spectrum. And how does that, how would wearing a mask, imp just excuse my ignorance, but how mm -hmm. would wearing a mask impact on that for you? Um, yeah, so a common, a common trait among everybody on the autistic spectrum is various levels of sensory difficulties. Um, and they, they can vary a lot from person to person, but like a lot of people on the spectrum, I have my own. Um, I have a lot of very difficult sensory problems, so I have to wear very specific types of clothes. I can't wear any kind of accessories, or watches or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, as you can imagine, wearing a mask was very, very difficult for me. And, Corey, what would you like to see? How would you, you like to see this, uh, this kind of resolve so this sort of situation doesn't, doesn't rear its ugly head again? Yeah, so before the incident in question happened, the very bad incident, I had already been challenged on two separate occasions about not wearing a mask. And they were both extremely positive and brief exchanges. Um, someone came up to me, a member of staff, and was like, hello, mate, you know, I can see you're not wearing a mask. And I briefly explained to them why and that I've got ID um, and I've got more idea if they need it. And it was a very positive exchange. Their body language was really positive. Their tone of voice was really comforting. Uh, and all these things make a huge difference. Yeah. And I would say the exchange didn't even last 20 seconds. Sure. And then it was over and we both went on our way and we all felt really good about it. And those, those are the kind of incidents that I think we need to be pushing towards as the new standard. Yeah, of I course. Think you don't yeah, mind I explaining think... the situation to somebody. You don't mind asking an innocent question. Mm. But when people want you thrown off a bus and are being quite mm. aggressive, that's not mm. that's not okay. That's not okay. And I'm sorry about that, Corey. Uh, let's bring in Nick, uh, John by Nick Ferrari now. Nick, what do you make of all of this? Well, I've taken a lot of calls on my radio show. I think that's possibly why I've been invited on. It is it, uh, sadly, it is a growing problem. But let's just back up a little bit, and I, I want really to just point your viewers to two areas. In a way, the government, I'm afraid, cops some of the blame, but so do some of our stores, because some supermarket chains, I won't name them, uh, have said that unless you're dealing with foodstuffs, it's actually up to you, whether you, as a member of staff, whether you wear a mask as you're going up and down the aisles, stacking the shelves, whatever. So that gives you a degree of confusion when you're in one of our major, or actually a couple of our major supermarket chains. Yeah. And then there's the government. We have extraordinary restrictions or applications of the law at the moment, which I think Michelle and Corey have come across, because I'd ask you, for your viewers, to consider this. Um, you have to go, you have to wear a mask if you're on a bus or a tube train, if you're in London or whatever, uh, if you're, and keep two metres from a stranger. But the same rules, you can sit in a restaurant or a bar, one metre from someone you've never seen before in your life, and you don't have to wear your mask because obviously you're going to avail yourself of a meal or a drink or whatever it might be. So I'm not defending for a moment what Michelle and Corey have been through is wrong. These are busybodies. We're all going through tough times. It is highly likely that someone is not wearing a mask is going to be in a vulnerable sector of some sort. Yeah. So why you would seek to challenge them is beyond me. But there is a degree where, as I say, the government and some businesses have added to this confusion. And that's what I think you're seeing uh, out on the streets and what your two guests are suffering. Yeah, yeah the changing goal posts and mixed messages make it so difficult, I think, for people, exactly then, doesn't that. it? Exactly Well, they do. And again, initially, remember, we were told, don't wear a mask. There really wasn't going to be that much benefit. And in fact, if it got wet, it was worse for you. Mm -hmm. Now, understandably, and I stress, the po you, know, you should wear a mask if you're going on public transport. If, you're, if you look across at Paris, you may already know, guys, as of this morning, the whole of Paris now, even if you're just walking down the street, even if you're just going to the baker's or posting a letter, you have to wear a mask, and that's a city as close as Paris. So governments around the country have given these very mixed messages. Again, I am not condoning what your two guests have been through, but there is confusion, but people just need to back off. We're going yeah. through, people are, are in charge times, they're fearful of their livelihoods, they're fearful of their lives, they're fearful of the health of their loved ones. Now is not the time to be a busy body. No, and let's not start taking the law into our own hands, you know? It's like, it's just a recipe for you disaster. Do, you do get the sense that some people who are waiting for this their whole lives to be busy bodies. Oh yeah, <laughs> just this is the time to be self-righteous now. This yeah. is the time to be that person, which is I, a shame. I think, I think you've put your finger on it. it this, this is the defining moment for some people's lives. Yeah. And I say to anybody watching, as you've heard from your two great guests there, just just press pause from it. The person who's not wearing a mask, just as the gentleman with Asperger's, might have a very valid and an emotional aspect to that. Yeah. And the last thing they need is to be held up, ridiculed or challenged in front of the public.
exactly that. You're right. Well, thank you, Thanks, all guys. three Thanks of you. Thank you very us. much. I just feel like we need to know a little bit more. Like this is really the first. We well, don't want to stigmatise, but at the same time, this... if 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 genuinely wearing a lanyard meant you're exempt from it, yeah, and you know there were genuine reasons for getting this, then sure, it's that's done. That. Yeah.